so it's been a, it's been a great event really and we had uh, we had three um uh, three great topics uh, we talked about gen ai and uh the impact it has on uh, existing organizations in general and, and platforms in particular uh we talked about regulations and everybody was talking about this emerging paradigm uh new paradigm um in europe uh and beyond and we talked we just talked about the, the the circular economy and how these platforms are increasingly powering uh, sustainable ecosystems that are at the heart of the circular economy and and uh, we use the example of fashion uh, to illustrate that so I, i'd just like to take a few minutes to um reflect on these three topics it's very difficult in our field now to have any conversation uh, without talking about uh, generative ai or gen ai and uh, and and like jeff parker i think many of us have had this uh, mosaic moment you know the first time uh, you use a, a browser and you discover the web uh, and it's very much the, the the same feeling when you uh, uh, when you realize what uh, what this technology can do i mean the breadth of capabilities and the speed at which actually uh, these tools are evolving is a uh, is is quite incredible um so it was fascinating to hear uh, jeff and, and law discuss uh, these innovations and the impact they're already having uh, in the market. When we, we talk to our clients, um, we uh, we have a number of questions about uh, about Gen AI. I mean, one question is: uh, Is this real? Uh, does it matter? And uh, and the answer is absolutely yes. I mean, it's a question we we had at the beginning of the year, and if you're still asking yourself this question, um, I think the answer is yes, and and you you almost need, need to catch up. Um, the the other questions we have are about um, what's the impact uh, on me, and and that's a, a more difficult question because some things uh, will be easier, so there's a positive impact. Some things will be more difficult, so there's a negative impact in some other areas where you may have more competition, for example. So you really need to look at your business uh, carefully. The way the, the technology will impact uh, your business will also depend on how you're organized. Are you, are you a platform or are you a, a, a traditional value chain or, uh, you know, are you a mix, a uh, hybrid organization? So these things uh, need to be uh, to be looked at. And that's important. And for sure, there are very significant uh, productivity gains uh, to be had with these new technologies. But more importantly, the strategic question that needs to be asked is not just, you know, how can I do what I've been doing for years uh, more uh, effectively? It's a necessary uh, condition, and and it's and it's important to do that. But it's about what are the new things, what are the new products, the new markets, the new types of uh, organizations that are enabled by this technology, and um, and and these are very interesting discussions. And we think many markets are going to be. Uh, impacted, and many firms are going to be augmented, um, and uh, and that's the kind of conversation that uh, that we're having at, at, at the moment. The second topic was platform regulation, and uh, and the panel was uh, titled "Platform Regulations at a at a Crossroad," and that's because there is a big shift, there is a big change. Uh, platforms have always been uh, subject to existing regulations, of course. But this is the first time regulations are designed specifically for platform businesses. And the European Commission and, and, and other countries have thought very hard about what, what that meant. And uh, we talked about the, the DSA, Digital Services Act, the DMA, the Digital Markets Act. We talked about the new regulatory unit um, in the UK, uh, the uh, DMU, Digital Market Unit, uh, inside the CMA, the Competition Markets authority lots of acronyms in this uh, in this space but basically that's important because some of these regulations um, will impact all the platform businesses all types of platform businesses so for example the dsa has got provisions that that would force platforms in in, in europe to um, uh, solve uh, specific issues to be transparent about 
uh, algorithms. If your uh, content is being moderated by a platform, for example, you, you now have a, a right to appeal and uh, understand why the decision has been made, et cetera. So some of these regulations apply across the board. And some of these regulations are targeted at large established platforms. And they're about making sure that the market remains competitive. Um, so when you're a large established platform, you may be tempted to keep uh, people outside of your ecosystem, for example, some potential co competitors, maybe, and um, uh, and that will not be possible anymore. So uh, practically, uh, you may find that um, uh, Apple uh, has to open up it, its iPhone to third party applications outside of its App Store. So before you had to be approved by Apple and, and go through the App Store, in the future, you will uh, possibly be able to sideload applications as a result of these uh, regulations. So very interesting time and very interesting discussion because the UK, not being part of Europe anymore, um, has a slightly different regulatory framework, more flexible potentially with uh, uh, bespoke code of, codes of conduct that will apply to uh, these large platforms platforms with a strategic market status, uh, as they're called in the UK, uh, or gatekeepers in Europe. And, and that may give the, give the UK some interesting flexibility, especially um, with all these new technologies we talked about, Gen AI. This is, of course, impacting the platform markets uh, at an unprecedented uh, speed. So um, interesting to, to see how, how this uh, unfolds uh, going forward. Now, the last topic... Uh, really was about uh, the circular economy and, and platforms powering the circular economy. And this is an increasing trend. Uh, more and more clients um, try to use platforms uh, for good. And, and, and that was very interesting to listen to, to Tom talk about this shift from a linear mindset to uh, a, a circular ecosystemic uh, mindset and, and he wants uh, his products to be uh, or the majority of his products to be circular uh, and uh, and the platforms of course are ideally positioned to uh, to enable that so uh, lots of interesting things eBay uh, you know trying to reframe the debate and, and nudge Gen Z uh, to uh, to to go for preloved uh, items instead of uh, uh, the the fast fashion uh, you know reflex that uh, that uh, this generation may have. So very interesting to see that platforms uh, have a, a big role to play in the, in powering the circular economy. Uh, I love Tom's uh, line about the future of platforms being about enabling better choices. So that's it. Um, thank you very much. I mean, it's great to bring together practitioners and, and policymakers and academics uh, to have these conversations. So I'd like to thank all our speakers, all our panelists. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the people who've helped to make this event possible. So uh, Robin Boot, Justin Coots, uh, Stephanie Talson, uh, of course, uh, Laura Claire, uh, who has been my uh, uh, co-chair today, and uh, Katie Chapel, who's been uh, illustrating in real time uh, many of these debates. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we've got a big community. We have more than 1,500 people now. Um, so, so thanks for participating, contributing on the chat, et cetera. Uh, thank also uh, to our sponsors. I mean, I'd like to thank Google for sponsoring this event, which allows us to uh, keep the event uh, free. And we look forward to seeing you uh, later on this year. So uh, we'll tell you uh, more via email, but uh, we are thinking about, of course, new events and uh, offline and online. So that's it for me. I'm going to leave you with the animated version uh, with the illustrated summary of the event by uh, Katie Chappell. Thank you very much indeed. See you soon.